Welcome to the inaugural graduation of Telio University and the 30th anniversary celebration of TNET International. I'm David Dury, Provost of Telio University and Dean of Training for TNET International. I welcome you to this virtual graduation and bring greetings from the board, the faculty, staff, and trainers that are a part of the Telio Network, serving students in 40 countries in Africa, Asia, and the Americas. Together, we are pursuing the vision of finishing the Great Commission of Jesus Christ worldwide. Good morning, graduates of 2021 of Telio University. I want to congratulate you on your accomplishments. Uh, I'm Rick Ensrud. I'm the African Continent Director for TNET. And it's my privilege to give you just a little bit of history uh, about uh, TNET uh, International and Telio University. Uh, this inaugural graduation of Telio University also marks the 30th anniversary of TNET International. TNET is an interdenominational ministry. It's committed to coaching pastors, as you well know, and church leaders to finish the Great Commission in their congregations, the regions, and every country of the world. Finishing the Great Commission in every country of the world so that no nation is unreached is what we call Project Zero, because the mandate of all nations or all ethnos ends at zero. As I said, I'm Dr. Richard Ensrud. It's been my honor to be part of the Telio Network story, first as the lead pastor of a local church, next as a TNET trainer in the USA, Asia, and Africa, and then as the TNET Continent Director of, uh, of Africa, and finally, as a faculty member of Telio University. The Telio University story began in 1991 when TNET International was founded under the Evangelical Free Church of America. After training over 1,000 churches within the denomination, 
TNET became an independent interdenominational nonprofit ministry in 1996. But in 1999, TNET was invited to India, then to Southern Africa in 2003. And while TNET continued to equip US churches, it expanded its focus internationally and now serves over, well, in Africa, over 10,000 pastors alone and probably 12 or 13 all around in 40 nations. And these are pastors who otherwise would have had limited educational opportunities and mentoring in how to have a disciple-making church ministry. TNET's course material has long been used for doctor of ministry courses by many of the top seminaries in the United States. In 2012, TNET's International Pastor Training Center courses were recognized for degrees by a graduate school of theology in Minneapolis, Minnesota, the USA. But in 2018, TNET founded Telio University to ensure that we could continue to serve pastors from majority uh, world uh, countries throughout the world. TNET will continue to train international pastors to plant, to revitalize and multiply disciple-making churches to finish the Great Commission region by region. And Telio University will offer distance education studies and degrees built upon TNET's rigorous training program. We follow the principle found in 2 Timothy 2.2, teach faithful men who can teach others also until the Great Commission is finished because the mandate ends at zero. God bless you all. Have a wonderful, wonderful graduation. Greetings, all you graduates from me and my family here in the United States, in Colorado, in the mountains. We are so very thankful for you. We are so proud of you. And we want to congratulate you on work well done as you've sought to finish the Great Commission through becoming equipped to be the best that you can be for Jesus Christ. As I think about our great mission that God's given us, I'm drawn to the end of the Gospels and then to the beginning of the book of Acts. And I want to encourage you with some biblical truth for a few minutes as you think about your role in the Great Commission. Now remember, in the book of Acts, Peter preached a great sermon in Acts chapter 2, and we saw literally thousands of people added to the very first church as a result of his teaching and, and his sermon. And there had to be mass confusion. They had to wonder, what do we do now? Now that we've been called Jesus is ascended. He's left us. We know what our mission is. What do we do? We've got thousands of people now in our church. How do we do church? How do we finish the Great Commission? But the Bible doesn't give us a prescription or a plan or a blueprint on how to do every church. It gives us some principles that we can follow. We've been given the Great Commission, right? We know that from Matthew chapter 28. We've been given doctrine and truth that we can teach and adhere to. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 tells us we have the power of the Holy Spirit. God didn't just leave us on our own when Jesus left. He gave us the empowerment and the strength of the Holy Spirit living within us and dwelling us to finish the Great Commission in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and then the uttermost parts of the earth. We could say in our cities and in our countries, and around the world. We've been given leadership offices that have been described in the New Testament, and now in Acts chapter 2, and I want to just focus on one verse, Acts chapter 2, verse 42, we've been given very specific instructions in regards to what we're to cling to. Now I want to read the verse to you and then break it down for a couple of minutes. In Acts chapter 2, 42, it says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to breaking of bread, and to prayers. Now, the word devoted themselves is a very powerful 
and profound concept and word in the New Testament. It means to be strong or steadfast or to endure or to cling to. And the, the New Testament translates Old Testament words as well. And some of those Old Testament words that are linked to devoted themselves um, come from verses like Isaiah chapter 42, verse 14, which says this, for a long time, I have held my peace. I have kept still and restrained myself. Now I will cry out. That's that word devoted. I will cry out like a woman in labor. I will gasp and pant. So devoted themselves is linked to a word in the Old Testament that has to do with the woman going through childbirth labor and she's in pain and she's struggling and she's working and she's enduring to see this child born. Devoted themselves has that same flavor where we devote ourselves, we, we struggle, we labor to see something come to fruition and we won't give up until it's been birthed in one sense. It translates other words in the Old Testament, like in Job chapter 2, verse 9, where Job's wife said to him, do you still hold fast your integrity? So it's got this idea of child labor, of holding fast, of being strong, being of good courage in Numbers chapter 13. And then in the New Testament, we've got the same word showing up in other verses, like in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 27, where it says, by faith, he left Egypt not being afraid of the anger of the king, for he endured or stuck with it as seeing him who is invisible. So it refers to the kind of endurance that clings tenaciously and expectantly to the invisible God and makes possible that attitude of faith that was exemplified by Moses or Job or a woman in childbirth. It means to be... Um, continually enduring and clinging to and holding to something. So now think of this. Jesus has left. The apostles are now feeling a little bit abandoned, but he said, I've given you the Holy Spirit. You will have strength and power. And I want you to cling to something so tightly that you see it birthed, that you see it come to fruition. And he gives them four very simple things that they're to cling to. Now, as we do TNET and the Great Commission, we don't want to get sidetracked with all of the other things. We want to cling to the most important things. And those are, first of all, the apostles' teaching. Now, this just isn't any teaching or any pastor's teaching. It's teaching that came from the apostles themselves. And so we could say, this is the Bible. This is scripture. We want to be those who finish the Great Commission by clinging to the truth of the word of God. We don't want to get sidetracked by other systems, by other teachers, by other religions, by other ideas, by other philosophies. We want to cling to the word of God because our lives depend on it and the mission depends on that. The second thing that he tells them to cling to is the fellowship, he calls it. Now, now, this is the word in, in the Greek, it's koinonia. You've probably heard this word before, koinonia. And a lot of times we think fellowship has to do with coming together in relationship and um, eating a meal together and having fellowship or drinking a cup of tea together and just being in fellowship. And that's really not what this word means at all. This word koinonia had to do with fellowship in regards to a mission or a vision. So it was the idea that people came around a common mission. We've been given this mission in scripture. We've been given the great commission. So as we cling to the word of God, we're also clinging to the same vision and mission. We're not getting sidetracked to do other things in our churches, to do other things in our ministries. We're clinging to the same vision, the same mission that was given to the apostles. And that is to finish the Great Commission. So they, they, they clung to that. They decided we will, we will labor in this. We will struggle in this until it comes to fruition. So cling to scripture and come around the same vision and mission as churches and as leaders in your churches. And don't let anything sidetrack you from that. Now, the third thing they're supposed to cling, cling to is what he calls the breaking of bread. And we could call this 
communion and community. So in their culture and in the way they did church and the way they did this, they would come together and they would remember Jesus Christ by breaking bread together and drinking the wine that represented the blood of Jesus. And as they did this, they would take meals together. So they would eat together, they would sup together, they would be in relationship together, and they would remember Jesus together. So we're to cling to the word, we're to cling to the same vision or mission, which is the Great Commission, and we're to cling to remembering Jesus and being in community and relationships with one another, where we are bearing one another's burdens, where we are walking in our faith together, where we are living out our faith together in community in the church. So they clung to that. And finally, it says those three things plus one more be committed to, be devoted to prayers. And notice it's in the plural. It's not just prayer, but it's prayers. This had to do with not only all the different prayers of scripture, which were prescribed and, and which were given for us as a model on, on how to pray and how to learn how to pray, but it was just to be, it was to be devoted to being on our knees continually in prayers where it's not just one prayer, it's prayers. We're praying all the time. It's continually, it's, it's ongoing. But prayer is often an act of what I call desolation. In Mark chapter 1, verse 35, it says this about Jesus. And rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he, Jesus, departed and went out to a desolate place. And there he prayed. The word desolate is the word eremos. It can mean desert or isolation, somewhere where there's nobody else. So here's the scene. Jesus has just concluded an intense time of physical ministry. He's healed Peter's mother-in-law. The word spread, and as a result, many sought out Jesus. And it says that the way Jesus filled his tank, the way he got energy, the way he got refreshed and renewed in his spirit and in his soul was not by going out and being alone and doing something arbitrary or meaningless. He, he labored in prayer. And as he prayed and he got alone in prayer, he began to get refreshed and renewed and re-energized so that he could do mission and ministry and be in relationship and teach and the encouragement to us is, if we're going to cling to anything, cling to the word of God, cling to the same vision and mission to finish the Great Commission, cling to relationships, and then cling to and be devoted to getting alone and filling your tank and being energized through prayer. So when it comes to finishing the Great Commission, when it comes to doing church the right way, my encouragement to you as we finish Project Zero is let's be devoted to these four things together. And my prayer for you is that you would experience God's incredible blessings as you are devoted to the right things in your churches. And we will then see the Great Commission finished in our cities and in our countries and around the world. So God bless you all. I'm proud of you. I love you all. And my family wants to greet you and send you their congratulations as you've labored to become equipped to do these things, to honor and glorify our Savior, Jesus Christ. God bless you. I love you all. Greetings. I'm Tim Ald, Vice President of TNET International and Telio University. Before we present the graduates, I want to give you a general idea of what these students have accomplished. Tele University confers degrees based on the curriculum created and tested over 30 years by TNET International all around the globe. This curriculum provides an intensive training and coaching process for pastors and prospective church planters. It requires participants to remain active in church ministry so that the principles they are learning can be applied immediately within their local church context. Now, pastors participate in training centers in their own countries near where they live and serve. They complete a new semester term every four months for three or more years. They implement rigorous ministry assignments designed to equip them with the essential core knowledge of finishing the Great Commission, Bible study methods, evangelism, 
church planting saturation, church health and growth, and of course, building a disciple-making church. Every pastor and church leader in our program is equipped to train their congregation to be part of a teaching team to mentor and assist other pastors in the same manner they have been. After, after course five in the fifth term, students continue their studies while facilitating course one for new students in new training centers. Thus begins an ongoing leadership development process and multiplication of training towards finishing the Great Commission in their country and within their lifetime. Now, typically graduates of our core programs have accomplished the following. They've created a plan for using all the ministries of their church to make mature disciples. They see an increase in the church's weekly giving by 75 to 200 percent. They significantly increase the evangelism growth of their church. They've mobilized 50 percent or more of their church members to join a weekly intentional disciple-making small group. They've seen 10 to 40 percent of church members graduate to a higher spiritual maturity level. They've developed effective disciple-making lay leaders in the church through an apprentice training process, who then go on to plant one to two new house churches or evangelistic home groups every year using these trained apprentice leaders. They also experience numerical church growth of 50% or more over those three years. And finally, they've joined a team to help facilitate a new TNET training center where other pastors and church planters can collaborate in effective disciple making to finish the Great Commission in their churches, cities, and regions. So Taylor University graduates have the satisfaction of knowing that they are participating in an ongoing process of leadership development and disciple-making multiplication so that the Great Commission can be finished in their country within their lifetime. Now, it is my honor to commend these students to receive the degrees which they have so deservedly earned. Distinguished guests, families of graduates, faculty, staff, and friends, on behalf of the faculty, administration, and board of Telio University, I'm pleased to present to you the inaugural graduating class of Telio University, 2020 to 2021. Through your hard work, determination, and God's grace, you have completed the required studies, including rigorous application and coursework in finishing the Great Commission, Bible study methods, developing a disciple-making church, saturation church planting, church health and growth, along with training other pastors in multiplication. Congratulations on this momentous achievement. Greetings. I'm Ron Brigat, Dean of TNET School of Ministry. Today, we have over 300 graduates from 11 countries in Africa and Asia. We will begin by acknowledging students who are recipients of the Diploma of Pastoral Ministry. On behalf of the faculty and board of directors of Telio University, we present the following students, the Diploma of Pastoral Ministry. Greetings, I am Dr. Richard Ensrud, Dean of TNET School of Theology, and I'm pleased to introduce the bachelor's degree graduates from 11 countries in Africa and Asia. Telio University recognizes the following students as having completed sufficient requirements to become candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Pastoral Ministry.
Greetings, I'm Dr. Joe Olashe, Academic Dean and Dean of TNET Graduate School of Ministry. I'm very pleased to introduce master's degree graduates from nine countries in Africa and Asia. Telio University recognizes the following students as having completed sufficient requirements to become candidates for the degree of the Master of Divinity. Greetings, I'm Dr. David Dury, Provost of Telio University and Dean of TNET Training. I'm pleased to introduce the Doctor of Ministry degree graduates from two countries, Ghana in West Africa and Singapore in Southeast Asia. Telio University recognizes the following students as having completed sufficient requirements to become candidates for the degree of Doctor of Ministry. Samuel Utu Pimpong. Samuel was blessed to be born into a Christian family in a rural village in Ghana. At age 16, he accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. In 1983, he began a community church on the campus of the University of Ghana at Legon. He continues to serve Legon Baptist Church as senior pastor. The church has planted three daughter churches, and one of these has planted yet another church. Among other earned degrees, Samuel acquired his master's degree in applied theology from the University of Wales Spurgeon's College in the United Kingdom. He currently serves as the chairman of the board of TNET Ghana. The focus of his ministry project dissertation was finishing the Great Commission in Ghana through training of disciples, disciple makers, and church planting. Our next candidate for the Doctor of Ministry degree is Justifier Ninoy Okwe. Justifier planted Grace Baptist Church in Accra, Ghana, where he served as the senior pastor until his retirement. He implemented TNET disciple making principles and grew Grace Baptist Church from approximately 250 to 750 members. And he also led the church to plant eight daughter churches that, in combined attendance, 
had nearly 1,100 members. Justifier now serves as the country director for TNET in Ghana and the Anglophone regional director for TNET in West Africa. Justifier's ministry project dissertation documented his focus on advancing the work of finishing the Great Commission through training center multiplication in the greater Accra region of Ghana. Our third candidate for Doctor of Ministry is Keith Lai of Singapore. Keith is the senior pastor of Covenant Presbyterian Church and has been with this church since his conversion in 1974. After serving on board the Logos Operation Mobilization for four years, he returned to serve as youth pastor in his own church before eventually becoming the senior pastor in 1992. He is currently the Synod Moderator for the Presbyterian Church in Singapore, and he is also the current president of the National Council of Churches of Singapore. Keith has been a longtime member of the Intentional Disciple-Making Network of Singapore, which focuses on intentional disciple-making throughout Asia in partnership with TNET, Sun Life, Equipping the Saints, and Coaching for Life. Keith's ministry project dissertation documented his launching of TNET training centers for pastors in the country of Sri Lanka. Well, allow me to give you one final charge as we conclude. And I want to give you a charge from 2 Timothy um, chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, which say this, You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things which you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, these entrust to faithful men and women who will be able to teach others also. So the conclusion Paul has as he encourages this now young equipped pastor Timothy is that he would be strong. This is an imperative. This is a command. Don't be afraid. Don't be meek. Don't be anxious. Be, be courageous. Be strong. And, and it's in a passive voice, which means it's something that as we're strengthened, it, it, it's a strength that comes to us from somewhere else. It's the strength that comes from Jesus Christ, from the Word of God. It's not on our own strength, on our own merit, but the Holy Spirit empowers us. So he's saying, in a sense, rest in that strength that's been given to you to finish the Great Commission. And then he says, as you're strong, as you let the Holy Spirit strengthen you, as you rest in that strength, you will entrust to others what you've learned. It means hand it over for safekeeping. Don't keep it to yourselves, but make disciples who make disciples who make disciples who make disciples until the Great Commission is finished in every country of the world, with every people group, with every ethnos, with every language, so that Jesus Christ can be supremely glorified. So rest in the strength that God's given you and don't give up in your mission to make disciples who make disciples who make disciples. Let me pray for you a prayer that comes from Ephesians chapter 3 as we conclude. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Amen.